Chapter 20, April 9th, 3326 Holston Drive, Bristol, Tennessee. Miles hiked today, zero. Total miles hiked on the Appalachian Trail, 341. Weather, warm and raining. Vivi seemed to understand what taxes meant in a way that I did not. Shoot, she said. You didn't finish that before you left? Mom shook her head. It can wait a few weeks, I said, can't it? Of course it can't, Danny, Mom snapped. The federal government expects to be paid on time, and your father and I have to file together. We were married all of last year. I can't mess him up, too. She heaved a sigh. Didn't Dad ever mention this when you talked to him? Um, I said, I'd never talk to him, though I'd pretended to several times. We walked on the sidewalk, Mom muttering to herself and Vivi looking for a taxi as though there might be such a thing in Irwin, Tennessee, late at night. Danny, Mom said, why are you limping? I think I messed my feet up pretty bad. I'd had blisters already, of course, but they had been the sort that you could rub with alcohol, put some tape over, and ignore. Mom marched me back to the emergency room. When I took off my boots, all ten toes were cracked open and bleeding. Oh, Danny, Mom said, why didn't you say something? They didn't hurt that much, I said. Mom shook her head. They will. I couldn't help it, I said. Of course you couldn't, baby. Well, you'll have a day off now anyway. Anyhow, I've got to call your father and have him come get us. Now, I said. Mom look, looked exasperated. It might as well be now. Have you looked at a map lately? We're only 40 miles from home. We are? The only maps I'd looked at were our trail ones. Precise, detailed renderings of the mountains and valleys with shelters marked clearly, but hardly any towns. Irwin, Mom said. Oh, I said stupidly, that Irwin. Oh, sugar, Mom said, rubbing my neck lightly. I can't believe I'm putting you through this. You're not putting me, I said, as I stood up, wincing. I'm putting you, remember? This was my idea. But I knew, she said, I'm the mother. I'm so sorry about your toes. A sympathetic doctor bathed my feet, rubbed them with some antibiotic cream, and wrapped them in gauze. We get a lot of hikers in here, you bet. Vivi sat with me while mom went in search of a payphone. When she came back, she looked furious. Why didn't you tell me you hadn't talked to him? You told me I had to, I said, but I didn't want to. But if you'd told me the truth, I would have called him myself. I would have let him know we were okay. She rubbed her forehead with her fingertips. He's been frantic. He didn't know where we were. Of course he did, I said. We were on the trail. He could have come looking if he was so upset. I thought of the trail registers. He could have found us. He just wants to fuss at us for not, but not do anything himself. He gets to have everything his own way. Mom shook her head. He's your father. I said, well, he's not a very good one. You're out here, aren't you? Because of you, not because of him. Mom didn't know what to say. Vivi gave mother's shoulder a little squeeze. Want to come off the trail with us, Mom asked her. Free hot shower, rest today. It shouldn't take more than one day. I suddenly thought that I might stop breathing if we lost Vivi right now. I didn't know why. Maybe it showed on my face. Maybe that was why Vivi nodded slowly and said, sure, that would be fine. Dad kissed me when he saw me. His face was furrowed with an expression I didn't recognize. As he looked me up and down, the furrows grew deeper. You look awful, he said. You must have grown two inches taller. How much weight have you lost? Your mother said you hurt your feet. How bad are they? Hi, Dad. Nice to see you, too. I've got 10 blisters and bad B.O. How are you? How are Lisa and the baby? It was nearly midnight now. Dad had come to get us straight away. He smiled a fake smile. I'm good. I'm fine. You should have called me. So Mom says. He looked at Mom and Vivi. This is Vivi, Mom said. She's coming with us. We'd like to be back here tomorrow or the next day. I thought maybe you'd be ready to call it quits, Dad said. You've got how much? One week left? Mom said, four. Dad said, I want Danny to stay with me and Lisa while you're home. No way, I said. I want to make sure you're all right. I'd rather be burned in oil, I said. I'd rather be set down naked, slathered in peanut butter in a field full of grizzly bears. I'd rather, that's enough, Danny. My mother's eyes flashed dangerously. To my father, she said, she's adjusting. She's eating plenty. The blisters just happened today. You can't make me, I said. Mom continued, almost pleading. This has been good for her, for both of us. To me, she said, you'll stay with your father, period, and you'll behave. 
which was how I found myself at two in the morning in a bed with pink sheets in my father's new house. You've maybe heard stories about people who sleep in the woods for so long that when they come back to civilization, real beds feel too soft, too uncomfortable. Wrong. I didn't like my dad and I really hated Lisa, but their guest bedroom was heaven on earth. No smells, no through hikers grunting, no mice, no insects. Lisa, late the next morning, reminded me of a mother bear out to defend her cubs. She curled her hand protectively over her pre little pregnant belly, and she looked at me only when she thought I wasn't looking at her. Dad served breakfast. Neither Lisa nor I spoke. How are your feet? Dad said. He had made me a bacon sandwich, my favorite thing on earth for breakfast, and gave me a cup of tea with the right amount of sugar already added in it. I took a sip and discovered the sweetness and tears came to my eyes. Fine, I said. Dad sat down and looked at me earnestly. Any signs of infection? Lisa toyed with her piece of toast. I think. I cut her off. There's no redness. There's no pus. The cracks are starting to make new skin. My boots fit. I've gotten a few blisters, but nothing like this so far. It was just because of trailhead. Because of pulling his pack downhill. I spoke quietly. Dad leaned forward, listening. Who's trailhead? He asked. I explained about trailhead and how he'd wrecked his knee. Dad grimaced. Lisa said he teaches high school English and he calls himself trailhead. Dad took a sip of coffee. It's a technical term, he said. The trailhead is the start of the trail. I could see Lisa hadn't known that. Do you like to hike? I asked her. I've never done it, she said. Well, Dad mostly likes to go alone, I said, so I don't suppose you'll have to worry about that. Lisa cleared her throat. I'm glad you're finished. Your father has been worried sick. He looked perfectly healthy to me. I'm not done, I said. We're going back tomorrow. I looked at dad who nodded. He might be worried, but he was sticking with the plan. So long as you promise to call me whenever you can from now on, he said. I want you to stay in touch. We aren't near phones very often, I said. I think this is ridiculous, Lisa said. She set her fork down on her plate and made a hard, angry clink. Why are you giving your own child permission to keep doing this? I just don't understand. She's 12 years old. You don't ask her if she'd like to try a beer, do you? You don't ask her if she feels like smoking a cigarette. Why are you letting her skip, skip school, grunge around in the woods and hurt herself? She put her hand on her little stupid swelling on her belly. She said, when our baby is born, we're going to raise it right. If I moved or spoke, it would do something awful. I wanted to hurl plates at the wall or smash Lisa's perfect nose into her petite bowl of non-puke-inducing cereal. I wanted to say something so mean she would never, ever forget it. I figured I always had plenty of reason to hate Lisa, but until now, I'd never realized that she hated me too. I said nothing, did nothing. Dad said very quietly, Danny turned out all right, though I'm not sure I can take the credit. Catadin, I whispered. Dad nodded. You've got no right to criticize her, he continued in the same low voice as though he were speaking a foreign language and our, as though the words were difficult to say. You weren't in our house. You don't know what it was like. Katanin is my responsibility and her mother's, not yours. Lisa didn't back down. I've got some say in this house. I hope if she's going to stay here, I said, I'm not going to stay here. You can stay here anytime you want, said dad. You can live here if you'd like to. He said it like he meant it. A look of utter horror crossed Lisa's face, just for a moment. I saw it, dad saw it, and I saw him see it. You are my child, he continued in a firmer tone. You are my family, and I will never forget that. Do you ever, do you forget Springer? I asked. Never, he said, I never will. Later, dad came into the guest room. I had taken a shower and changed into the cleanest of my clothes, packed my gear and made the bed so that no one could tell I had been there. I bet Lisa would change the sheets anyhow the moment I left. I'm sorry, dad said. She shouldn't have said those things. We all have to adapt. That includes Lisa too. She's been under a lot of stress lately. It's a difficult time for her. She's worried about the baby. Duchenne muscular dy dystrophy is X-linked recessive, I said. The baby can't get it from you. I think she's worried about other things, Dad said. Like what? Dad shook his head. I don't know. All pregnant women worry about their babies. But anyway, I'm sorry you had to hear all that. She should be the one apologizing, not him. I tugged at the drawstring on my pack. Can you take me home? I wanted him to say no. Stay here for the day. We'll work it out. I'll make Lisa behave. 
I wanted him to say, you're my daughter. You're important to me. Sure, he said. You can tell mom I'll take you all back to Irwin tonight if you want. I left the tax return on the counter with all her other mail. She'll just have to sign it. He put his arm around my shoulder, a rare gesture. I mean, I mean it about staying here. Anytime you want to, you can. We'll make it work out. I know it's been tough on you, but Lisa's a lovely person. She really is. You just need to get to know her. Not in a hundred million years, I said. I'll let you know. At home, mom was sitting cross-legged on the carpet in the middle of Springer's bedroom. The air in the house was thick and choky. Dust motes floated heavily in the air. M mom had her eyes shut. She looked like she was doing yoga. Mom never did yoga. Where's Vivi? I asked. Bathtub, said mom. I think she's been in there for half an hour. I walked in and sat down on the floor beside her. She opened one eye and studied me. I think we should sell this house, she said. Why? We're coming back. Mom shrugged. Are we? Really? To this house? I don't know. I don't think I want to. Maybe you've got a good, maybe you've got good memories here. I don't. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? Here. Here in this house eight years ago. Springer healthy, mom happy, dad laughing all the time. New flowered wallpaper in my bedroom, which got taken down when it became Springer's room, the only bedroom on the first floor, the only one a wheelchair could go into. I lay down and put my head on my mother's lap. I wanted to say, remember my flowered wallpaper? But I couldn't. When we get back, I mean, mom said, when we're finished, think about it. We don't have to stay here. We could go anywhere we want. Chicago, Wyoming. I could get a job somewhere interesting. Maybe I could even get an interesting job. Dad doesn't live in Wyoming. I felt a stab of anger over Lisa and the new baby. Mom stroked my hair. Where do you want to go? She asked. Irwin. Hmm. Good start.